It was a busy, emotional day in court for day three of the Vanderbilt rape retrial. Jurors not only saw video of the alleged assault taking place, they also heard from a witness who was there when it all happened. Chris Conti is covering this trial, and Chris, this was a tough day for the defense. Vicki, this will likely be the day that jurors have a difficult time forgetting. They saw three different video clips today of that alleged rape happening. While you won't see it, they saw all of it first person. Deja vu is a feeling of having already experienced the present situation. That's from when the shutter button was pushed to take the video. There was perhaps no better word to describe what Corey Beatty went through today. And this is the video. Prosecutor Jan Norman queued up three videos, which were narrated by Detective Chad Gish, who discovered them on an iPhone back in 2013. Yes, this is the victim laying on the floor of the dorm room. Um, we see Corey Beatty's hand there. A few seconds of video that shattered lives. It's Mr. Beatty appearing to have sex with the victim. The video was shot inside Gillette Hall, Gish said, at 2.40 in the morning. What you can't see is the unconscious female student laying on a tile floor. 14 jurors first watched, then listened. <laughs> You didn't see her move at all. The defense fired back. There's no penetration in this photo, I believe. <clears throat> Not right. Not that I see. Oh. Then came the text messages found on Corey Beatty's phone days after the alleged rape occurred. They are trying to say we raped this bitch Saturday night. I'm about to get kicked off the team, bro, period. I'm fucking my life up, period. All of these, though, were secondhand accounts. What jurors heard next came directly from a man who was there. Hey, who appeared to be on top of Miss? Attempting to have sex. Corey Beatty. Jaborian Tip McKenzie is also accused of rape. At one time, he was Beatty's best friend. Today, he was testifying against him. Well, he continued to um, test a young lady. There were moments. Yeah, Amanda, you need a break. I'm fine. I'm fine. When the 21 year old appeared shaken by it all. Well, I'm ashamed of. What I watched take place that day, I'm not happy about it at all. It's just, I hate that it happened that way. Defense attorneys concluded by questioning his credibility, a tactic used during the first trial, deja vu of sorts, like it's all been done before. Worth noting here that the victim was not here today. She will likely be here on Friday when she is expected to testify once again. We are live at the courthouse downtown, Chris Conti, News Channel 5. Thanks, Chris. An inside perspective on the Vanderbilt rape retrial can be heard each day on News Channel 5 Plus. Nick Barris and Nick Leonardo have more now on how a former football teammate is taking the stand against the other suspects. Nick Barris here along with News Channel 5 legal analyst Nick Leonardo. We continue to do the anchoring of the gavel to gavel coverage of the Vanderbilt rape trial day three. We know that this morning there was a lot of testimony and more that the jury saw video of the alleged sexual assault and rape. Now, beyond that, there was really a key, key witness that was called by the prosecution, Jaborian McKenzie, and he brought up some things we hadn't heard before. Yeah, absolutely. We heard some different things in this trial that we didn't hear in the last trial. Mm -hmm. Namely, we heard some statements that were made by Mr. Vandenberg, uh, you know, uh, as it pertains to having flushed the prophylactics down the toilet and statements that were made that, uh, that he had done this before. Maybe we're not his, in trouble. We're not in trouble. We can and get his out of this. father had, uh, had beat a rape case. And so those were really shocking statements. And it, it was almost like a trial in abstention today for Mr. Brandon Vandenberg. Yeah, it did not look good for Vandenberg. And of course, then Corey Beatty pulled into it as well. Now, beyond that, McKenzie talked about what happened happened in that dorm room. The question now is credibility for him, right? The defense tried to cross him and damage his credibility. What do you think the jury's thinking of him? Well, it's important to remember that he was called by the state. He's a state's witness. He's testifying in an effort to somehow get what he calls consideration, which really means that he wants to get a lighter sentence for his testimony. And the jury's going to have to weigh the credibility because we found out that he's lied not only to the police, but he right. also lied to the district attorney's office. And so the jury's going to have to weigh this and determine whether or not they believe his testimony to be credible and what weight they're going to give it. That's right. McKenzie said he had lied before, but the last time he told the truth, does the jury believe him? We'll see. Much more to come. It won't be surprised if the prosecution rests, if not tomorrow, certainly by Friday. By Friday. We'll continue to follow it, and you can watch us on our gavel to gavel coverage. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Thanks, guys. And